Shalom and welcome to Temple Jam. This is Yitzhak Ruvain with Abba Horowitz. We are speaking to you from Jerusalem, Israel, from the Temple Institute. Check out our website, templeinstitute.org, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Twitter feed, our Instagram, and uh, Temple Jam you can watch, you can listen to on YouTube, and you can also listen to on uh, Spotify and on Deezer. And uh, we're going to pick up right now where we left off uh, talking about the Temple Mount. Very very uh, heated, energetic discussion we've been having. And I just basically cut the tape so that uh, we could split it up into listenable portions. So I'm going to backtrack and play you the last few seconds, the last things I started to say at the end of the last show, just to be able to pick up and we'll carry on uh, in our discussion about the Temple Mount. You look around the world today, maybe this will be my closing statement, you can follow. <laughs> you look around the world today and the world is so screwed up. There's so many problems. There's so much, you know, uh, discord and dissension and, and, and depression. depression. You know, maybe a holy temple or maybe just a place where everybody can go and pray right now, you know, uh, freely and like, you know, uh, disburden themselves uh, without anybody harassing them in a place where they know God is hearing them, you know. Maybe that would be a real elixir, you know, a real positive thing in the world. Why, why is everybody so afraid of trying it out? I, I don't get it. Well, I think, uh, you know, religion today, uh, most religions are seeing a decrease in the number of members within their religion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids, like I know in the Dati Lumi world in Israel. The, the national religious world in Israel. 40% uh, of the children are giving up religion. Right. Uh, it means that we're not teaching them well. Yeah, not teaching we're, them properly. We're not giving right. them the right chinuch, the right education, and we need to change that. It's clear it's not working. If it's not working, right? I mean, 40% is a big number. Right. And in the Haredi world also, I, I, I don't know how much it is in the Haredi world, but I, I would assume it's pretty close at mm -hmm. this point in some form, okay? And, and it means that we're not teaching them about God. Right. That's my opinion. I think a lot, you know, a lot of times we teach the halachot, the, the laws, laws right, the rules and regulations, okay, and which is the minutia, we'll call it. Yeah, yeah. And, but we always forget about the key to it mm -hmm. all, what it's all for, and that's mm -hmm. God. And we always have to reconnect it to God. You know, a lot of times you'll see that people are very strict about every little rule. Right. But they've forgotten their purpose. Right. Yeah. And, and I think we need to inject in the children the purpose to talk about God, to explain to God. And if we don't have the answers, to find those answers from our right. rabbi, from books, whatever it is. I really, really, truly believe this. I know how my son drove me nuts mm -hmm. about, you know, existence of God. Mm -hmm. And I had to bring him answers about right. um, also um, the fact that if God knows everything, that obvious question, if God knows everything, where's free will? then where's free will, right? Mm -hmm. And answering those questions. And I can tell you, it was many, many, many hours I spent <laughs> with him. And, but it was wonderful because it meant that we were talking about right, God. Right, right. And I think you, you need to talk about God. I think parents have to talk about God to their kids. Mm -hmm. And amongst themselves, husband and wives need to talk about God. They don't do it. Yeah. You just don't hear it. I don't hear in Jewish households, God. They always say, Baruch Hashem. Right. But they don't really mean it. <laughs> They're not really thinking about God, you uh -huh. know? Um, you need to talk about God. That's yeah. And I think that's my... And what is the temple? It's all about God. Yeah. Yeah, Shrat Ashkina, where his... His, his honor is resting there. Right. You know, God's presence is there. The idea is, is that the Ramban, and I think it's in a few more parshas in Bereshit from here, from this week's parsha, mm -hmm. uh, another couple of parshiots. It's uh, the Ramban, actually the famous Ramban, that Har HaMaria, Ein Ki Im Beit Elokim Shar Shamayim, that it's the gate of heaven. The, uh, Mount Moriah. And the, the Nachmanides says it's uh, the greatest place for prayer and offerings right okay because you're at that portal yeah you're right where there. we transform from physical to spiritual mm -hmm. and our prayers are going right up there and whatever that means right because it's a it's an odd concept right but, but whatever that means but the point is is we're getting as close as we can mm -hmm. our prayers are as effective as they can be at that point right uh and it's again you know it's where god wants us 
to be. Like we're told, you know, three times a year come, and 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 you know, for the ho- for the holidays, for the pilgrimage holidays, and our presence, you know, makes God happy there. Our presence there makes God happy. Now you might say, "Wow, well, what's he talking about? Making God happy?" Again, we're talking about God right now. We're not getting lost in the minutia. We're it's a relationship. And if we think that what we do doesn't affect God because He is so, you know, omnipotent and and distant, then that's not a relationship. Obviously, we you know we have an effect. Our actions, our thoughts, our prayers, uh, you know, can make make or break God's day, as it were. Yes. It's, you know, uh, so we have to be very careful. You're right. That's I really agree with you 100. percent That's the real issue. You know, a relationship with Hashem, which is a, a relationship. If we have to put it into human terms, well, that's how we have relationships. You know, uh, putting putting our relationship with God in human terms doesn't make mean that we're saying God is a fellow human. It just means this is this is our language. This is our vocabulary. Right. One Rav thing, Rav Nachman Mibreslev. If I could just yeah. add, one of the great Hasidic masters. He actually said it's not good enough to pray Mm -hmm. because what happens is prayer becomes routine. Right. And then we're not even thinking about the words we're saying to God. You know, in Judaism, we daven every day three prayers a day. Mm -hmm. And it just, you can't help it. At times, you're just saying the words at rote because Mm -hmm. you know them and and you're not thinking about it at all. And then, you you know, you finish Shemana Esri and go, how did that happen? Right. (laughs) Okay. So, um, so Rav Nachman Breslov had a great idea. Mm -hmm. And he says it's not enough to pray. You need to talk to God in your own language. Yeah. Speak to God. It's yeah. a weird thing to do at first, mm-hmm. okay? But you get used to it, and then it becomes wonderful. You get used to it, and it, it opens you up. It opens yes. up your your inhibitions, and you, it, op- it, you develop a, a rapport. That's you do. You that really way. do. You end up talking to God more yeah. and understanding His presence. Right. As it says, Shiviti Hashem Negdi Tamid. David HaMelech said in Psalms that I put God in front of me uh, in uh, constantly, God is constantly in front of me, mm-hmm. and I and and you know how many people are actually doing that? Right, and none of us, you know, are perfect. I think one people get in, inhibited because, well, you know, I'm not so perfect. I do things I shouldn't do, so maybe I shouldn't pursue this relationship. Uh, God gets it. Uh, he knows we're not perfect. Uh, you know, some of the there are certain beautiful prayers that that have been added over the year to to the prayer book. You can say, you know one of the first, you know, the early part of the, the morning prayer, uh, you know, we shouldn't let our sins be, become a, a, a dividing, you know, a dividing wall between us and Hashem, our prayers to Hashem. You know, yeah, we're not perfect, but just as we ask Hashem to, you know, look the other way, as, as it were, like, we have to accept the fact that we're still a work in progress, we're still working on ourselves, but in the meantime, we should... You know, give it, give it all we got, and and pursue this relationship. It really opens up, opens up your mind, your 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 heart, your soul. It's it's an amazing therapy. I mean, it just keeps you going. Um, I think also mitzvot will take a uh, different stand for you when you actually have this connection with God. Yeah. Because a lot of people do the mitzvot but don't think about right, God, and that's right. hard to do because you don't feel there's a connection or a reason. Yeah. But when you have God first. Then these mitzvot become completely different. Mm-hmm. You want to do them. You underst- You try. Right. You actually feel more of a connection to them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, one thing I want to say in this entire discussion, and I think uh, I'm going to end up breaking this up into a couple of shows because we've been talking for a long time. We haven't about the Temple Mount. We haven't talked about halacha, about you know whether or not you can go to the Temple Mount, because it's as far as I know, it's. That's, that's already, that issue is already off the table. Even those rabbis who oppose Jews going up to the Temple Mount today... I would say today, finally off the table. Yes. Finally off the table. You know, yes. they, they, don't have an, they don't argue halachically that we shouldn't go. They have a couple of arguments. One is that it's going to upset the Muslims and we shouldn't do that. Okay, we've talked about that concept. That's uh, coming from a rabbi, I don't find it any more acceptable than coming from the chief of police. Uh, that you know that should be our concern, and I don't think it's a. I don't think it's true. I think that attitude is what upsets, what riles people up. Well, it also doesn't make the police force look very good because uh, yes. I obviously are so scared of these people right. making a ruckus. Right. And, and what you know, maybe train your policemen to actually uh, uh, actually enforce the law enfor- and, and exactly. protect people's rights. And shouldn't you be enforcing? Uh, what respect should I have for the law right. if the police themselves are afraid of the criminals? Right. So again, that's. Yeah. Um, but I'm re- I'm referring now to like you know one of the rabbinic 
you know, right. religious reasons for not going up. Because we don't want to upset the Goyim. We don't want to upset the Muslims. Okay. There's no source in that anywhere. There's no source in that. Certainly not halacha. The, actually, it's the opposite. Ayerach levavchem, it says in Devarim, don't, don't, be, don't get weak. Don't let right. yourself become weak. When it comes to the Goyim, don't worry about them. It's actually, we see the exact opposite. And there's a halacha too, that if a soldier, this is in Hilchot Melachim, mm -hmm. very important halacha. If a soldier, who's, you're all going to war, right? So there's a couple reasons why a soldier doesn't have to go to war. And one of them is if he's going to make the other soldiers scared. Right. He's going to actually become afraid. You you kick him out. Right. Because, because so ah, you're not allowed to be weak. Right. It's actually a mitzvah. You're not allowed. And the Ramam actually, my monitor says over there, how important it is and how, ter uh, sorry, how terrible it is if a soldier actually becomes afraid during this period of time. Right. He has to it be strong. It's a disaster, yeah. It's asur the fachet. You're not allowed to be afraid. Right. And I don't remember the exact words over there, but it's pretty strong language. And so I want to just throw this, because this lowly garot bagayim, don't, don't start up with the gayim. I want to say, for anybody who's listening, mm -hmm. I've researched this issue. It does not exist. It's made up. It's a gullus idea. It's idea that emanates from, from being under the exile. Uh, exile for so many years. We become weak and no Jewish pride, but there's absolutely no halacha uh, source for saying something like this. Right. And actually it's a chil Hashem for someone to actually say this. So again, yeah. you know, getting back to what I was saying, We're you know, the rabbi, very heated here. Right, the, the rabbis who say that, again, it's not a halachic issue. It's, you know, it's their, it's their uh, political position, I guess you could say. And the other argument that they use is, well, we don't want Jews, there's certain places where Jews are not allowed to enter. And, you know, God forbid you enter there. Well, the Jews that go up as Jews, you know, perform all the uh, preparations that we need to perform halachically, going to a mikveh, et cetera, et cetera. Before we go up, we wear, wear the attire that we're permitted to wear. We only go to the places that we're permitted to go to. Um, so, you know, if a Jew, a Jew can go, can, can join a tour group, you know, he's not wearing a kippah, he doesn't, nobody knows he's a Jew, he uh, joins a tour group, and he can go anywhere in the Temple Mount. Uh, and, you know, go into places where it's forbidden for a Jew to go. That's not on us. Like, you know, we don't do that. That go up as Jews. And, um, you know, so there's no, I, I was hard to say, we didn't raise any halachic issues, but there's no halachic issues. These are just like... There are no halachic issues whatsoever. And, and I think that finally the rabbis who are so deeply opposed yes. to it, they, they get that. I, a lot of the Haredi rabbis now... They, they keep silent when it comes to yeah. the issue of Harabait. Uh, it's very clear. I've heard it actually from people in the Haredi community because they say at the end of the day, bottom line, there's nothing really wrong with going right. up to Harabait. There's still a few groups that for their own silly reasons that are made up uh, have, have decided to keep going uh, with the anti-Harabite approach. But, you know, that's our history. What are we going to do? Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the Haredi world, and actually there's a lot more Haredim um, that go up to the that, Temple that I, I would call religious right that go up to um, Harabite mm -hmm. and it's amazing because there was I, I would say no one who was Haredi went up 10 years ago right. and now when I go up to the Temple Mount um, I would say it's probably half half yeah which is is really amazing and and, and you have to understand how hard it is for a Haredi to make a decision like that, to mm -hmm. go up to Ahara right, there's a lot uh, of social pressures right. within the Haredi world that they frown upon this, and, and for whatever reasons, again, it's all silliness at the end of the day, but um, for these guys to take the stand, this independent stand, and, mm -hmm. and, and say, I don't care, I'm going up to and the And these Temple aren't, uh, you know, these aren't yeshiva dropouts that are no, looking for no, an these adventure. Are the these are, these the are, are rabbis the and really, really learned people, really brilliant people, and they're pushing it forward. Yeah. Um, and again, you go up to the Temple Mount as Jews, uh, and you have the ultra-Orthodox, the Haredim, you have, you know, uh, national religious Jews, whatever you want to call them, and you have secular, and you have, and everybody's together, and everybody is having a great time. And everybody talking is, Torah is, together, yeah, praying it's, together. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, it's, it's a amazing. wonderful experience. And again, one other issue, yeah. which I do want to address, is that... You mentioned earlier that uh, you know everybody knows or should know every Jew should know that the Temple Mount is the holiest place uh, for Jews. A lot of people don't know; they think that that the, the Western Wall, the Kotel, is the holiest place, and that's because for 54 years there has been this this propaganda effort uh, by you know by basically every the establishment here. You know, let's tell Jews, let's 
Jews can pray, you know, when they say Jews can pray at the Western Wall, Muslims pray in the Temple Mount. Western Wall is not part of the Holy Temple. It's part of the retaining wall that holds the, up the entire plaza of the Temple Mount. And in, in Temple days, it was a marketplace. Correct. Can I, can I give an example? Yeah. There was a reporter in Israel that went up to the Temple Mount, and after his wonderful experience up there, mm -hmm. I think it was through Tom Nisani, actually, and after his wonderful experience there, he actually said, I'm going to give you an example of what the Temple Mount is to the Western Wall. Mm -hmm. The Temple Mount is your smartphone, uh -huh. and the Western Wall is the cover that you put on your smartphone. Okay, that's a nice one. <laughs> yes. I thought you'd like right. that. Right. So, again, um, but re-educating Jews to understand that the Temple Mount is the place. You know, you can have an opinion, a lot of opinions, but it's the place. No and one can deny that. No one can deny it. And, you know, we recently read the, the Torah reading of, of, of Vayera, where, which is where Avraham brings Yitzhak up to Mount Moriah. As, you know, it's an offering. And of course, you call it in Hebrew the Akedah, the binding of Yitzhak. Right. And that's where we're talking about. That's Mount Moriah. That's where the Temple Man is. So, you know, it's like it's the most basic part of the fiber and being and essence of every Jew. The fact that there are many Jews that don't know that just means that they have to reconnect and you know re-explore themselves, and again re, you know re-enter a dialogue with Hashem. I mean, uh, and I think that's a process that every every Jew should and can, and I think eventually will, you know, will go through. Uh, you mentioned before and uh, earlier that you know there are many religious Jews whose children, you know. Go off, go the off, go off the path. way, yeah. uh, and there are also a lot of you know kids raised secular that that do make the connection. You know, the that's true. They they the that's light true. does get turned on, and they and they get into it. And and again, that idea. I mean, Israel. I think is one of the beautiful dynamics of Israel today is that there's people going in both directions. You know, becoming less religious, becoming more religious. However you want to, and you know, it's like a mix. Like we're all getting like a tossed salad. And uh, I think we're going to all end up, you know, being more or less on the same page and with a lot of, you know, with, with, with the knowledge and, and with, the, with the, you know, love for Hashem and the, and the fear or awe of it. You know, I think it's going to, we're going we're gonna to get there. It's a bumpy road and there's a lot of people who stand in the way and make it difficult for us. I think we'll right. get there. I would say like this, the people are great, the leaders aren't. <laughs> Something about yeah. being in a leadership role that... Yeah, that, I, uh, I, but I think the people, I agree with you, I think the people of Israel are great. They have amazing powers. Um, I think they're amazing people. And I think they have a spirit yeah. inside of them. And, and, and I think they have this, this also um, want to live life. Yeah. And between those two, I think you're right. I, I think... I, I would bet on the people. I would bet on the people. And again, you know, the Temple Mount is the place for the people. 100%. That's the place where all these different types of people are describing, <clears throat> they're welcome there. And they should be there. And, and it's not part, and one positive thing, maybe, is that since it's been, you know, rejected by the establishment, it's not, it hasn't been taken over by the establishment. Meaning they haven't, I like you know, that perspective. They haven't, you know, uh, burdened it with all their right. rules and regulations, and, and 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 you know, made it made it distasteful to people, which is what establishments tend to do. Correct. So it's still pure and still, you know, yes. inviting. So I think, you know, we have it's like threading a needle here. Like I think we're on the right, we're we're in the right path, and I think we're getting there. I think we're going to get there a lot sooner than, you know, than than many people think, because we see in terms of the numbers of people going up, it's just like increasing all the right. time. Right. It's, it's that that proverbial uh, large wheel that moves slowly at yeah, first right. as it gains momentum yeah, and then yeah. starts and the critical to mass accelerate. And then, right, yeah. and then boom, we're there. Not boom, not boom, <laughs> violent boom, but boom, spiritual boom. Exactly. Okay, I think we're going to wrap this up now. Yes, yes, yeah. I just want to point out you. that the Parsha of the Akedah is my Bar Mitzvah Parsha. Ah. So I just wanted to point Did that out. Do you want to say a little uh, Devar Torah for Should us? Should I just say a quick Devar Torah? Sure, go ahead. Well, uh, the only thing is, is that I saw that was very beautiful. It, it is that you know, why did Hashem have this idea of taking Yitzchak and almost sacrificing right. him? In that case, it would have been a sacrifice. It was right. an offering, but right. really, he'd be killing his own son. Yes. And what I saw is that, as well as Brit Milah, is also a similar question, which was in the previous mm -hmm. parasha. Uh, circumcision. I, circumcision is when you're eight days old. Right. Why do it? The kid's so young. Why yeah. are we doing this 
Brit Milah, the circumcision at such a young age. In fact, one could say it's very dangerous. We mm -hmm. know that a child, we don't know if a child's going to live. It takes a month to actually determine right. whether the child's healthy enough to live, mm -hmm. which is called a nefel if it, it dies before that. So what's going on here? Why did Hashem do these two acts, one after the right. other? And it was, we have a Masea Avot Simon Lebanim. Whatever our forefathers did, Avram and Yitzchak and Yaakov did, was to give a sign to their children. Mm -hmm. And the sign here to the children is, is that sometimes we have to be most nefesh in life. We have to give our, like, almost die for our beliefs right. in Judaism. We have to go really the distance to take those risks for Judaism, for God, mm -hmm. okay? And that was what Brit Milah is. It's Misiwud Nefesh. Yeah. It's one giving in, you know, training his child very, very young. Right? Of yeah. The idea of Messiah with Nefesh, of giving your total soul and, right. and body to God. And also, so too, in the Parsha with uh, Yitzchak, that Hashem was uh, you know, giving him as an offering on the Mizbeach, is that we too, is that we have to understand, especially when it comes to Haravait, yeah. we may have to give, do Messiah with Nefesh like yeah. the Chashmonaim did. Right. And the, I, I think there's something Makabim. about it being on the Temple Mount, the idea of the Messiah with Nefesh to actually capture that Temple Mount. We have to be Moser and Afish. Yeah, we have to give it, give it all we have and more. Yes. And uh, you know, that's not easy, but uh, but that's the way. That's that's how you that's how you acquire. You be, I'll, I'll say this: we have to be fully committed. Right. You have to be fully committed to this, you know. And and I think it's one of the most beautiful things in my life that I brought into my life 16 years ago mm. was the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. And and I will say that you know. The people, you know, the the core of of the people that go up to the Temple Mount, and there are people that go up every single day. They're completely committed, and that's a big advantage because people like Omer Balev, the current uh, police minister, here today, gone tomorrow. He's not committed to his job. That's clear because he's right. trying to get out of the responsibilities that he that he has to deal with. You know, they're here. They're, they're today, gone tomorrow. The politicians are very ephemeral. You know the. But, but the Jewish presence on the Temple Mount is, is here to stay. And again, the people that are leading it are amazing people. You know, they're really, really strong. They don't, they're not intimidated. And, you know, not intimidated by the police, not intimidated by being arrested, not intimidated by being distanced for half a year. They come right back, you know, as soon as they can, and they're back up there, and they'll it's get arrested again. It's not easy to have that inner strength yeah. to yeah. continue where you know so many people are against you right you know when you're the mute which is you're the minority in, in it you know it's like sort of like today the unvaccinated versus the vaccinated <laughs> in israel if i can mm -hmm. give a uh, <laughs> a metaphor mashal um but no it's very hard to continue yeah. in something where when you go to shul a lot of people look down on you um you know you know that you're not part of this bigger crowd right um and and but our crowd's growing it is growing and uh, and and i think it's growing with amazing people yeah so many new groups have have developed over the last couple of years yeah yeah i don't even recognize all of them I yeah it used to be that everybody you see you know you you knew them but right. uh, there's always new sometimes i go up and people say you knew this is your first time so you know <laughs> <laughs> now i've been going up since 1990 i think so uh yeah it's a great uh, a great development it's a historical development it's a prophetic yes. development we're in it we're in the middle of it and it's if happening. you ever see anybody from the government in israel mm -hmm. please ask them why they break my personal zuchut hayesod and zuchut pulchan which means they're breaking my right to pray mm -hmm. and my basic right as a citizen right every time i go up to the temple yeah Mount. and even you know there should be no other than you know proper uh, management of any open, you know, public area, like a museum or something, you know, the half deal. But the police shouldn't be the ones directing us. They, the police should be there for to keep the peace, to keep the security, to make sure that our rights aren't violated. But they shouldn't be the ones, you know, leading us and telling us you've got five minutes, you know, you got to hurry up. Uh, they, it, it's not their job. It's not the police job. And if it is their job, well, maybe they have to look at what's the problem here who's causing all the problems yeah who are the violent people and maybe not allow them to go onto the temple mount because they're so violent right that's for sure okay that, that's the job I of mean, the police that would just be no. the simple answer right. that's right? the job of the police not monitoring you know i shouldn't have them the, following me on the temple mount right the fact that they're following me I says know, there's a problem that already is a violation for sure i'm saying you know as we talk about the great progress but 
we're still being, you know, smothered by police presence when it's totally not their job and it's just their surrounding us is a violation of our, of our freedom. Um, and again, there are police in public places to, you know, keep the peace. I get that. No problem. That should be their job. They shouldn't be the ones uh, directing whether or not we can pray, pray and where we can pray. You know, if they someday come up with a committee and with rabbis and all sorts of people and they say, this is where, you know, this is how we're going to arrange it, fine. We can argue about it, but fine. Right. Anyway. I just want to end off with a yeah. quote from yes. Thomas Jefferson. Oh? Uh? Okay. So when it comes to this idea of all our rights being broken on Harabite, right. I mean, it's just a travesty of justice. It's a breach of my rights on every level. It's unacceptable what the government of Israel is doing. And I really hope this message gets out there. Mm -hmm. It is a literal breach of my rights. There's a lot of breaches of our rights during Corona. I'm not even gonna go into that, okay? <laughs> Where many governments in the world have completely right. broken the contract between its citizens and the government. Mm -hmm. And Israel has, has been very good at that as well. But I wanna talk about just the fact that I can't go up myself when I want to the temple and pray the way I want to pray and bow the way I want to bow is a complete br uh, a breach of my own personal rights. And also, it's not a law. Right. It's not a law. It can't even be a rule. It can't be anything because, and here I'm going to quote Thomas Jefferson. If a law is unjust, which certainly in this case it is, mm -hmm. a man is not only right to disobey it, he is obligated to do so. Yeah. I mean, so I think what we have an obligation to God, mm -hmm. an obligation to ourselves, an obligation for everybody else out there yeah. that's watching, for us to pray. Yeah. I don't care what the Israeli government or Israeli police say. Mm -hmm. I care about God. Right. And God wants me to pray there. And I'm going to pray. Yeah. And that's it. I don't think there's any more. It's not a just law, and it needs to be broken by everybody. It's not a just law, and everybody... Even those who are opposed to Jewish prayer in the Temple Mount know it's not a just law. And even the left, you know, the secular left in Israel knows it's not a just law. Right. Um, everybody knows it. it's a charade, what's going on. Anyway, I really think we... we we're going to end here. We, we can go on forever, okay. but we're going to yeah, end Yeah, we, we literally could go on forever. Hope we have But uh, we want to send you... This message is very uh, strong message, obviously, as you can tell from the tones of our voices. It comes from frustration, but also we want to send the message out there to people so they actually understand what's going on here. Yeah. I think worldwide today we're seeing a lot of people's rights being broken, and, and I think this is one of them, but this has been ongoing for a long time, for many, many years. And uh, if you know, understand that. Understand what's going on here. And not everything Israel does is good, and this is one of them. And, and we wanted to just send that message so people are aware of it. If we don't tell you, right. you won't be aware. Right. And, um, but... Uh, at the same time, as we are very positive of what's going on there and the number of people joining the ranks and understanding this basic idea of prayer, building the temple, etc. And uh, we want to wish you just an amazing week. And amazing week. And if you want to, you know, continue uh, to, f to hear and see what's going on in the Temple Mount, then just uh, check out our Facebook page because... Uh, Almost every day we have we have something. There's often news. There's new situation. There's whatever. You and we will answer any questions you have. Yes, send in questions. Please go to our website templeinstitute.org we'll and uh, send us via the uh, the uh, contact page. Send us the questions. Uh, we'd be happy to address your questions in future Temple Jam shows. Thanks for being with us today, Temple Jam. Thank you.